Choo Hey, what it do, y'all? It's your boy E2 Blue coming back at you again on this Tuesday. Oh, I got a gray hair coming in there right there, right there. A little gray hair in there. It's all good though. But anyway, even with the gray hair, you boy still. Still young. <laughs> still young, live, spry, whatever you want to say. Um, but yeah, so um, a lot to talk about right now. I didn't get a chance to do my Victory Monday video yesterday because um, I was out of town. I just got back in town last night. Um, back on the work grind. And of course, it's going to be another short week because it's Christmas week. So I um, hope everybody's doing well. I'm going to spend time with family this week. Hope you guys do that. Um, that's always important because family is good. Um, we did get a win. Cowboys did get a win. So, uh, Cowboys are now 10 and four. So can we stop with the complaining? Our team is 10 and four. We're winning. I don't give a damn how you win. I don't care if it's ugly because again, this is the NFL, right? And I'm going to be talking about this throughout this video because I got a lot to get off my chest. I've just been sitting, pondering, and thinking about this while I was gone. And then watching that game on Sunday, like, just, you know. We're going to get into it. But anyway, um, can we stop complaining? Our team is 10-4. and four. There's not many teams that are 10-4 and four right now. The Cowboys are the second seed in the NFC division. In conference, I'm sorry. Um, you are now for, well, Washington plays the night against the Eagles because their game got pushed back because of COVID. Kind of feels... No, do I feel sorry? No, I don't feel sorry. Anyway, they got screwed because they, their game got push, pushed back because their guys, you know, have the virus and then the, <laughs> they got to turn right back around and play on Sunday a night against us. So that's going to be interesting. So, we already had our game. <laughs> Of course, you know, we beat the Giants, got them up out of there, 21-6. to six. Um, Four takeaways in that game. You have, can we can we now say that this defense is legit? Can we say that? Can we say the Cowboys defense is legit this year? Can we say that? Um, three games, three straight games with four takeaways. With four plus takeaways, I should say. Yeah, this defense, this defense is so legit right now that Demarcus Lawrence is betting D Dak Prescott that the defense will have more takeaways than the Cowboys' offense score points. And that happened this week, and Dak Prescott comment was like, our defense whooped our ass. And this is the thing. I don't have a problem with our defense playing better than our offense right now. And I'm going to explain why. For years... For years, our offense has been carrying this team. And our defense, we were just praying for our defense to just not mess it up. Not give up too many touchdowns. <laughs> That's what we prayed for for years. I want to say 2012? I don't even remember. I want to say maybe like the early 2000s is like, I can remember our defense even being remotely this good. Um... And if you could think of a year, you could correct me on that because I don't I don't remember exactly when. But that's how long we've been because it wasn't throughout it wasn't at all throughout Romo's era. So <laughs> that's why Romo had to gunsling so much because we had to compensate for everything on offense. Our defense, we've had okay defenses. Remember that remember those years of Ernie Sims? Our defense was so decimated. We were getting guys off the couch. Ernie Sims. Like we were we were getting guys. I remember he came from the Lions or something like that. We had Ernie Sims. We had some other line, random linebackers that, like, no other team would ever start. You know, they were either has-beens or never was. And we were starting them on the Cowboys on defense because we just needed people. Y'all remember that? That was when we had George Selvey and all that. So, shout out to George Selvey. That's my friend brother, too. But um, And I actually met him that year that he was with the Cowboys because that was my fraternity centennial year. And that was dope. I got to take a picture with him and stuff. We had a sat down eight had a conversation it was really good but um that's the thing like we our offense was taking over 
and overcompensating for what our defense couldn't do. Finally, the defense now, I can say, is better than the offense. I don't have a problem with that. Now, I do understand why people say that, okay, well, at the beginning of the season, Dak Prescott, when we went on our 5-1 and one run, Dak Prescott was balling, doing his thing, and then all of a sudden things hit the fan. Okay, I get that. Players have downtimes. It happens. Uh, there's, there's multiple th reasons for that. Dak himself, you know, he says he's not injured, but he's not going to he's not going to admit to anything that we speculate. He's not going to do that. So just because he says it's not doesn't mean it ain't. So it could be something with that ankle. It could be that. Um, it could be something with Keller Moore. Maybe Keller Moore is not doing something right. But he, Keller Moore did um, right his wrongs somewhat in this game. He did, you know, started running the ball more like he was supposed to and things of that nature. So that's a good thing. Um, so we did have a resemblance of a run game in this game. Tony Pollard came out there and was balling a little bit. And then Zeke Elliott had a couple of runs here and there. So um, definitely ran the ball better. But we already knew we were going to beat the Giants because they're so decimated. Um, we sputtered a little bit in the red zone on offense, but um, we got we just got to clear some of those things up. I didn't see the game until uh, halfway through the second quarter because I was out, and then when I got back to a TV to watch it, um, it was already in the second quarter. But so I missed some of the first, but I went back and rewatched it, so I, I seen what happened. Now, um. Clearly, Cowboys and Giants don't like each other. You can clearly see that because um, there was a lot of fights on the field, especially between the offensive and defensive line. Trenches, baby. Remember what I told you guys. If Dak Prescott in this offense, I'm just going to say real quick, if, if, if Dak in the offense gets this together, CeeDee Lamb stop dropping freaking balls, uh, we, could get, we could get Amari Cooper to stop disappearing in the game um, on the away games. Um... I think that it'd be all right. You get things together on offense. If, if, if Dak could get back to form like earlier in the season, these teams ain't going to want to see us. Right now, we're the second seed. So if we were to play the playoffs today, we would play the Saints. Um, It's funny how like everybody criticizes Dak so much, so much, right? But yet... Pat Mahomes had his downtime. Now all of a sudden their team after they after the, the the Kansas City Chiefs played us, all of a sudden they got their stuff together and their defense is playing much better. So it's helping him out. Because when Pat Mahomes came out, when he won his Super Bowl, it wasn't it wasn't really off of him. It was that defense that was helping out really good. Even Pat Mahomes admitted himself that he couldn't read defenses that well when he came into the league. That should tell you something. So he had to learn to maturate and grow. Same thing with Dak. Dak Dak's Dak's just got to get out of his mind, right? Because Dak know he he make he's making that money, and he knows that everybody's criticizing him right now. But he has to take the pressure off of himself because he's gonna get enough credit from the he's gonna get enough pressure from the coaches, and he's damn sure gonna get enough pressure from the outside media, the the talking heads, the fan base that all of a sudden jumps off the bandwagon and don't like Dak for whatever reason. So, with that being said, when you look at the dynamic of him being a quarterback of his team, already the limelight of being a Dallas Cowboys quarterback, you're going to get criticized. And Romo got the same thing. So, he just got to get out of his own mind. He has to just realize he has to block out that outside noise and just play and just make football fun again. Because I feel like Dak's pressing, and I feel like he's just trying to take it on to – everything onto himself trying to get back but don't do that because you rush your throws you, you do errant stuff and then you mess around and you have turnovers and you don't want to do that um it looks like his sidekick right now is is dalton schultz just like how romo his his security blanket was jason Witten. that prescott's is dalton schultz right now and i love to see the fact that jeremy sprinkle got a couple of passes in there Utilize the players that you got. Why? Why did you take this long in the season to not um to not um Why did you take so long in the season to to not uh, to not have your 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 tight end involved? You know that Blake Jarwin was not there right now because of injury. He's on IR. Why? Why didn't you utilize Jeremy Sprinkle before? You knew that like he can catch the ball. So put him more into the offense. 
you got Ferraris in the driveway, just drive them. Cowboys did uh, release um, Azur Kamara and Osiris Mitchell. Um, Azur Kamara will more than likely be coming back onto the practice squad, which is probably the reason why they release Osiris Mitchell, the, the wide receiver, because they're not using him at all. So, I mean, him losing him is not really a big thing. But, but, but Azur Kamara, I'm pretty sure they want him back. So they're probably releasing him just to make space real quick. And then once he clears wa waivers, they'll bring him back unless another team decides they want to pick him up. Um, I don't know if they're making space for Donovan Wilson to come back. That's probably what it is because Donovan Wilson is supposed to be coming back off of his injury as well. So that's more safety help for you because um, the safeties are playing well because they all got interceptions except for Donovan Wilson because he hasn't played much. But K KZ's got an interception. Malik Hooker's got an interception. Um, you know, these guys are balling. They're doing, they're doing their thing. Um, what helps Leighton Vander Esch and Keanu Neal is the fact that when Leighton Vander Esch is in his, I mean, not Leighton, Vander, when Micah Parsons is not rushing as much, right? So if that defensive front is doing their job, Leighton and and Keanu could play their best games. So it's almost like a trickle effect. If they're doing what they need to do, this section is doing their thing, and then the back end is getting their interceptions. So that's this defense is balling, and that's the, and that's the key. And the cog in that key. Is definitely Dan Quinn. Shout out to Dan Quinn for coming through here, changing this defense from what we had from old hot sauce in the eyes, um, Mike Nolan, to Dan Quinn that's got Micah's marauders out here running. And I'm loving what this defense is doing. They're playing at a Super Bowl level. And and there's, there's there's nothing that you can't you can't even doubt that right now. There's nothing you can say to to refute that so if we just get Dak and the offense back to playing how they've been playing earlier in the year oh don't nobody want to see us at all at all um the Cardinals messed around see that's why I said this is this is any given Sunday this is the league it's hard to win so if it's hard to win and the Cowboys are 10 and 4 what are we bitching and moaning and complaining about the Cardinals lost to the Lions Ooh, damn Lions got two wins, and they're eliminated from the playoffs. But they beat the so-called best team in the league with the best record in the league. Not anymore. They beat the Cardinals. They beat them. They beat them. Tom Brady lost to the same Saints team that we beat. And they shut Tom Brady out. Tom Brady didn't even get downfield for some for them to kick a field goal. It was donut. They were all over Tom Brady. Cam Jordan, all of uh, Demario Davis, all those guys in D on defense was all over. They were all over them. They're division rivals, so they know each other. So with that being said, they was all over that ass. So Tampa lost. Cardinals loss, which made Cowboys get to that second seed without even having to do nothing outside of beating beating the Giants. Now, if Washington loses tonight, weird on a Tuesday at seven o'clock. If they lose tonight, Cowboys win and clinch the division, and I will wear my Cowboys Run the East shirt that I still have from back when Tony Romo was the quarterback. <laughs> I still have the shirt, and I'm not gonna get rid of it because. It remains true every time we win the division. So why would I get rid of a t-shirt that I can wear every time the Cowboys win the division? Does that make sense? And that's what I'm going to do. Don't judge me. Anywho, with that being said, the Dallas Cowboys are 10-4. and four. They are now the second seed. Can they get that? Can they unseat the Green Bay Packers for the number one seed? We don't know, but I don't mind staying at number two because if that means we play the, the Saints, I'm good with playing the Saints again. I'm good with it because we know <laughs> all we got to do is stop old fast boy. Uh, what's his name? Uh, goddamn Taysom Hill. If we can stop him, that's it. That's it. Stop him from running. Don't run up. Don't run. Don't run. Don't run. So, like I said, that gets staying together, we'll be all right.
All right, so guys, just just calm down. We're ten and four. Be excited the fact that the Cowboys have ten wins with three games left left to play. You have you have Washington on Sunday night. You have the Cardinals because they moved the game to 4:25 from 1 p.m. So they play at 4:25 on Eastern Time um, next week. Then a week after that, the last game of the season, you close it out with the Philadelphia Eagles. I mean, I'm sorry, Eagles. So then you go in the playoffs. Can you get the first round by? Be nice. Um, but do I want us to get the first round by? Because I feel like sometimes we don't play well after a bye. Our players need to buy, the ones that are injured, that is. Uh, but outside of that, I just think that we just need to stay pat, just do what we need to do, continue winning, because we control our own fate at this point. I mean, win out, win out. You get 14 wins, and you'll be 14 and 4. Ooh. 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 To have 14 wins, just win out. Because the way the Cardinals played against the Lions, I ain't afraid of them no more. You could definitely beat the Cardinals. You just got to slow down Kyler Murray. And I understand D-Hop wasn't playing. I don't want to hear that shit. I don't want to hear that. Because the Cowboys was without um, Amari Cooper at one point in time. We were without Michael Gallup and CeeDee Lamb. So, I don't want to hear that. And we were still winning games. Although we lost a few of them in between. But they were all AFC teams. You didn't need those games. You won your NFC teams. And you're, and you're undefeated in the division. That's, the mo that, that's what... Go ahead and beat Washington next week because they're going to be shorthanded again. So it is what it is. Nobody feels sorry for the Dallas Cowboys when we're low. So we're not going to feel sorry about nobody else when they're low. We're just going to go in there and whoop their butts. With that being said, y'all, it's your boy E2 Blue. Always keeping it real. Like, share, subscribe to the channel. Make sure you tap that notification bell and put it on all so you um, can catch these notifications when I'm doing this video so you can catch them like CeeDee Lamb is supposed to be catching these pastas and it's your boy E2 Blue I'm out peace